What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you more news on Spider-Man PS5 and we finally have an official confirmation that the sequel for Marvel's Spider-Man is on its way. Late last year we got leaks suggesting that we'll be getting an announcement but not this soon. If you remember they said that Sony will be releasing a new Spidey game for the holiday of 2021 but it looks like we could be getting the game a year earlier which is dope because I think this is a title that will motivate gamers to purchase a PlayStation 5. It's definitely following a similar trend to its predecessor that undoubtedly helped the PS4 sell thousands of units. Not to mention that the red and white Spider-Man edition units sold like hotcakes. Hopefully we can get a black and red variation to the PlayStation 5 for miles somewhere down the line. But anyways, a question that everyone has been asking is if the game confirms the death of Peter Parker. Considering the fact that it's essentially going to be a self-titled game for Miles, it pretty much confirms the fact that the OG Spider-Man would not be the central focus, and it could possibly adapt the original source material from the Ultimate Spider-Man comics where Peter dies and Miles takes up the mantle. So rightfully so, people are worried. There's also the question of if this will simply be a DLC spinoff to the first game, and I think it's safe to assume that this will serve as a single prologue release leading up to the bigger and complete sequel to Marvel Spider-Man. This is a similar business practice that was done by Konami when they released Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. That game was originally going to be part of the Metal Gear Solid Phantom Pain, but due to extended development time, it was split into a standalone title to give players a taste of what was in store for them down the line. And I'm thinking this could be the case for Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is a brilliant move because we really didn't get that much downtime with Miles Morales in Marvel Spider-Man 1. Now as of me making this script for this video, it has since been confirmed that this isn't Marvel Spider-Man 2 as some assume it to be. When Insomniac posted on their Twitter page, people asked if this was a remaster or an expansion of the original game, and for some reason they kept giving the same blunt answer that it's a standalone game. Which is strange because it didn't really clarify anything. Thankfully, we got a solid answer. According to an interview given by The Telegraph, this game was described as more akin to an expansion bolted onto an upgraded version of the original title. Sony Interactive Entertainment EVP head of European business Simon Rudder said that Miles Morales will include more enhancements to the 2018 PS4 game, saying and I quote, I guess you could call it an expansion and an enhancement to the previous game. There is a substantial Miles Morales component, which is the expansion element, but also within the game as well there has been major enhancements to the game and the game engine obviously deploying some of the major PlayStation 5 technology and features. So it's as I've assumed, this will somewhat serve as a prologue game or an expansion, kind of like Uncharted 4 Lost Legacy or Infamous First Light. And I'm totally fine with this approach. The graphics in the first Spider-Man game were great, especially considering the fact that it was running off the same proprietary engine that was previously used for games like Sunset Overdrive and Ratchet and Clank, except with a few modifications. And it sounds like it's going to get even more modifications that will push the engine even further. Hopefully we can get native 4K 60 frames per second. But as I was saying earlier, it's dope that we're even getting this game and getting more downtime with Miles. Spoiler warning to those who haven't yet completed the first game, but during the post credit scene, Miles revealed to Peter that he had also been granted spider powers. And while the City That Never Sleeps DLC did expand upon this, it was all done through audio calls with Peter. I really wanted to see Miles adjusting to his powers, and there was one moment in particular where he mentions how he used his superpowered abilities to slam dunk on one of his haters, which is obviously a callback to The Amazing Spider-Man where Peter completely violates Flash Thompson. But we didn't get a chance to see this awesome moment referenced in the game, and I'm hoping some of these instances make their way into this upcoming title. It looks like it's going to give us an up close and personal look into Miles' life as he jumps into the role of Spider-Man. But anyways, the trailer kicks off with Peter Parker talking to Miles, and he mentions a powerful statement that Miles' dad told him, a hero's just someone who doesn't give up. Some of you may remember Jefferson Davis fought alongside Spider-Man to stop Mr. Negative's demons. Unfortunately, he died during his speech when Martin Lee and the demons committed a terrorist act by bombing the streets where the event was happening. But anyways, Peter tells Miles that it's his turn to be a hero, and something that I instantly questioned was what Peter could have possibly been up to to leave Miles with the task of being Spider-Man. And if I had to take a wild guess, I'd say that Peter will have his hands full dealing with the Inheritors. For those of you who are familiar with the spider getting tie in comics, Peter told Miles that he had to go away for a while to fight the Inheritors, and in case of a crisis in his absence, Miles should act as Spider-Man and help out, to which Miles agreed to do so. I'm not sure if Insomniac Games is going to take that story into consideration, but it would be the perfect explanation for why Miles is out fighting crime alone. But moving on, something that was mentioned in the leaks and is now confirmed is the dynamic weather cycle. If my memory serves me correct, the leaks mentioned that the game would take place during the winter of 2018 
2019, which is several months after the first game. As you can see, the streets and rooftops are completely covered in snow, and in some scenes you can see snow falling. Something tells me that these conditions will affect how your performance is during certain action sequences such as web swinging. Certain ledges may prove to be too slippery, and considering how green Miles is with his newfound abilities, it may be a bit more tricky compared to that of Peter who's more seasoned when it comes to web swinging. Speaking of web swinging, I'd like to point out a cool little callback. If you notice, when Miles does a free fall, he turns to the sky. And this is an obvious reference to Into the Spider-Verse where he does a similar move at the end of the movie. I expected them to do this sort of thing because the movie is probably the best source to lift some of Miles' signature moves. Films like The Amazing Spider-Man 2 served as a great reference guide for Peter's web swinging in the first game, so it's pretty much a given that Insomniac will do the same with Miles in this game. I'm hoping he has a more unorthodox style compared to that of Peter, and maybe he can jump higher and perform moves that mimic that of a professional basketball player, something that can make the two characters stand apart from one another. Another thing that I'm hoping is confirmed is the rumor that we'll get to roam around with Miles in his hometown of Brooklyn. If this is going to be similar to that of Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes where you're limited to one specific area, it would absolutely have to be Brooklyn, or at least utilize the existing map from the first game and expand upon it. It only makes sense to, but anyways, it looks like we have some new goons to fight in this game and they look like they're going to be suited with some high-tech weaponry. From an aesthetic standpoint, this game looks like it's going to have a very vibrant vibe since in every scene the enemies seem to be sporting neon colors. And once again, Insomniac is hitting on that Into the Spider-Verse vibe which had that same psychedelic color scheme with a splash of comic book inspirations. Something else this game seems to have lifted from Into the Spider-Verse is Miles' incorporations of his sneakers to his Spider-Man costume. At first glance, it looked like it was a single suit that covers up his entire body, but if you look closely, you can see where the shoe starts and where it ends. For some reason, the logo on the tongue reminds me of a Gucci sneaker, because it features the same red and green stripes that are particular to that brand. I'm not sure if Sony and Gucci have struck some kind of deal for this game, but I wouldn't be surprised if they have. But besides that, we have the costume itself that bears quite the level of detail compared to the original Spider-Man costume. And considering that Peter has access to hardware that allowed him to make the advanced and anti-ox suits, he probably assisted Miles in making his suit. As of now, there are no details on if this game will feature similar mechanics that allow you to equip certain abilities such as a taser web, but I'm hoping it does. And since Sony released DLC costumes such as the Into the Spider-Verse Spider-Man suit, we absolutely gotta get Miles' variation of his suit in all his cartoon and swagged out glory. Hopefully they can strike another deal with Nike to allow the usage of the Air Jordan sneaker that's risen back in mainstream popularity because of the movie. But anyways, if you didn't know, Insomniac originally intended to include the version of the black and red Miles Morales suit in Marvel. Spider-Man 1, but for whatever reason decided not to. And I think it's because they knew it wouldn't feel right giving Peter that suit since it's highly associated with Miles, and they probably also wanted to wait till the sequel where Miles actually dons the suit for himself. As you can see by the old concept, it's a painted over version of the advanced suit which is a reference to Miles Morales painting over the original Spidey suit in Into the Spider-Verse. The logo was partially painted in red and the color extends along the shoulders. And hopefully they give it to us as an unlockable in this game. This new suit looks like it's going to be tailored to fit Miles' fighting style, and the material looks like it's going to allow him to better utilize his Venom Blast, which we see him do multiple times throughout the trailer. Now if I'm going to be honest with you, it looks like some of these moves will be lifted from the original build of Marvel Spider-Man just with the added effect of the Venom Blast. Like this scene where Miles does what looks to be a leapfrog while shocking this enemy. But it does look like we could possibly get the inclusion of ground finishers since we see Miles using his invisibility while preparing to shock this mystery villain. Then again, it could just be a cinematic, but I'm hoping this is the confirmation of ground finishers. It would really help differentiate the combat between Miles and Peter. But moving on, I want to highlight this mystery character who seems to be super fast. As you can see, Miles is having trouble keeping up with whoever this is. And not only are they fast, but whatever tech they're using packs a punch since it sends these police cars flying. Many of y'all suspected this character to be Aaron Davis aka The Prowler since the color scheme is very similar to the one in Into the Spider-Verse. And I think that's highly plausible, but I hope that particular character is introduced during Marvel Spider-Man 2. Whoever it is, they look like they're going to be one of the major villains you'll have to go up against. But with that, I'd like to conclude this video. As I've said, this isn't the official Marvel Spider-Man 2, but a prologue expansion that will undoubtedly hold us over. I still believe that we'll get the true sequel during Holiday 2021, which is a year for Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. And that game will most likely have better visuals accompanied by even more features that Insomniac will disclose in the future. 
We'll just have to wait and see. While we do that, I'll continue to cover this awesome title since the devs have stated that they're going to shed more light on it. But anyways, what do you guys think about this game? Are you ready to experience this story that's all about Miles? And are you relieved that we'll get to play with Peter Parker during the official sequel? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future videos. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help you out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.